This is Bill Farmer again. Welcome back to McMaster University Computer Science 1JC3 Introduction to Computational Thinking. We are going to continue with the topic of logic. We're going to start today by talking about Booleans. Uh, a Boolean is just a standard truth value and there's two standard truth values, true and false. Booleans are named after the English mathematician George Boole he lived in the 1800s. Uh, what George Boole discovered is that the values true and false can be reasoned about and computed with very much like numbers can. He basically discovered that there is an algebra of truth values just like there is an algebra of numbers. And in his honor, this algebra of truth values is called Boolean algebra. Now, in Haskell, the type bool, B-O-O-L, uh, for some reason we always drop the E for the name bool, consists of two Boolean values, and these are denoted by the literals true and false. Now, a Boolean expression, is, which is also called formula, is any expression of type bool. So it's any expression that denotes the value true or the value false. And here are some examples of Boolean expressions. There's the literals true and false we've just mentioned. There's applications of Boolean functions like and, we can apply to true and false. And there's applications of predicates like equality, equality that we apply the one and two. Now Boolean expressions are absolutely crucial for a programming language because we need to make decisions in the programming language. We need to decide what code to execute and what code not to execute in certain situations. Uh, if we didn't have a way of making these decisions, we would have to execute all the code in our program every time we ran it. Uh, so Boolean expressions are used for making decisions. You evaluate a Boolean expression, and if the expression evaluates to true, you do one thing, if it evaluates to false, you do another thing. So Boolean expressions are a central part of programming. Now, we have something called a Boolean function. A Boolean function is just a function who has inputs and outputs that are of type bool. All its inputs and its output are of type bool. So in Haskell, it's gonna have a type of this form, bool, arrow, bool, arrow, bool, arrow, bool, arrow, bool, any number of times. Now Haskell has three predefined Boolean functions, negation, conjunction, and disjunction. Uh, negation is written as not, disjunction as a double ampersand, and, excuse me, conjunction as a double ampersand, and disjunction as two bars. Now, if we wanted to give the meaning of a Boolean function, or what we can call the semantics of it, we want to explain exactly what that function is, we can do this with a truth table. And this is a truth table we see here. Um, this truth, let me just make sure you see what the truth table is. So what we have here is this, whole thing is a truth table, and it's actually a truth table for not, and, and or. And how it works is we have two variables here, b1 and b2, and then we have all possible values b1 and two, b2 can take. Now there's only two possible values that each of them can take, false and true, so we represent false by f, true by true, and so the possibilities are false, 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 true, true, false, true, true. And now to give the semantics of B1, it says if B of not B1, if B1 is false, then not B1 is true. And if B1 is true, then not B1 is false. And if we're going to give the semantics of B1 and B2, we can see that the key case is here. This one case is when we get true, we get true only if the values of both variables are true. In all other cases, we get false. What's that saying is B1 and B2 
is true if B1 and B2 are both true. For B1 or B2, in every case we get true except the case when B1 and B2 are both false. In that case, we get false. Okay, so that's an example of a truth table. Uh, there are many, many kinds of Boolean functions. Let me just remind you of something. Notice when, when um, up here, right here, when I gave the type of Boolean function, it can take any number of arguments. Uh, it can take, you know, a billion arguments if we want. Now, the interesting thing is that there's lots and lots of Boolean functions. There's an infinite number. They can take any number of arguments. They can be very complex. But we can represent or we can construct any Boolean function using just not and and, not and or, or just a Boolean function called NAND and a Boolean function called NOR. Now these latter two Boolean functions are interesting because with them we can express all other Boolean functions. So we could take a Boolean function that takes a billion arguments and we could express it by using NAND over and over again. So what is NAND? NAND stands for not AND. It's also called the Sheffer stroke. It's uh, if you remember, um, well, we have, I guess we haven't talked about Sheffer yet. It's, it's named the Sheffer stroke, and Nor is named, also named the Peirce arrow. Peirce is a famous 19th century American logician, as well as philosopher. Um, so the meanings of Nan and Nor are given in this truth table here. And so we have the same setup here, with all the possibilities for the values of B1 and B2. And B1 and B2, B1 NAND B2 is going to be false only if both B1 and B2 are true, otherwise it's true. And if you, if you think a moment, we have true, 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 false. I told you NAND is not AND. If we go up to AND, we have false, 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 true. So that makes sense. And similarly, nor is going to be true, false, false, false. And that's really the negation of false, true, true, true. Okay. So I have a Boolean function question. Um, I have, there's another very useful Boolean function called implies. It's given by this table right here. And notice that for implies, if the first argument is false, we're going to get true in both cases. If the first argument is true, then we get false if the second argument is false, and we get true if the second argument is true. So these two cases. So, so the only way an implication that is an application of implies, is false, is if the, if the first argument is true and the second argument is false. That says true. If you say, another way of saying it, if, if B1 is true, then B2 is false, we would say that is a false implication. Okay, so the question is, which of the following Boolean, Boolean expressions is equivalent to B1 implies B2. So I'm going to give you a moment um, to think about that. You can turn off your video and work on it. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to do this. Uh, so we're basically, if you think about this, this is basically a Boolean function, and these all describe Boolean functions too. All Boolean functions of two values, B1 and B2. We can test A using a truth table and see if we get the same truth table as we have up here for implies. So that's, that's what I'm going to do now. So we're going to test the truth table for not B1 and not B2. So I'm going to draw my truth table here. 
and I have B1, B2, and we have these possibilities for the values. And we have not B1 we want to check, not B2, and we want to check not B1 and not B2. Okay, so for not B1, we know what not does. So we have false, false, true, true. This is going to be true, true, false, false. And now for B2, we have false, true, false, true. And again, we have not B, B2, so this would be true, false, true. false. Okay, and now for not B1 and not B2, we know that this will be true only if both of these are true, and that's this case, so we get true. And then we will have false in the other cases. And that's the truth table for this function, not B1 and not B2. Notice we have true, false, false, false. If we go back to here, we needed true, true, false, true. This is not equivalent. We've just seen that with a truth table. And we can do this again and check this with a truth table and see it's not equivalent and check this. Now let's look at D. D is not B1 or B2. Not B1 or B2. So I'm going to draw a new truth table. I have B1 here, B2. I have the same distribution of our possible values. And this was not B1. And this is not B1 or B2. And so not B1, again, we just, we have false, false, true, true. So we make it true, true false, false, and now we have not B1 or B2, and we know that this will be false if, if both of these is false. It will be false if both of these are false. They're both false in this case. Here's not B1, here's B2, and in all the other cases, at least one is true. So we get true, 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 false, true. If we go back here, it's the same as for implies. True, true, false, true. This is equivalent. And it turns out this is equivalent to. And we could figure this out using a truth table, but there's another way of doing it. And so let me, let me go back here to our working space. Notice we have not of the quantity B1 and not B2. Okay, so let me write let me write that down. Not of the quantity uh, B one and not B two. Okay not of the quantity B1 and not B2. Okay, we can put parentheses around here if we want to be careful. Now, there's something called the De Morgan's Laws. And what they tell us is that we can push this knot inside. And I'm going to use a different color here. We can push this not inside, and when we push it inside, we're going to get not B1 here. Um, and here we're going to get not, not B2 like this. And then we're going to, we're going to take the dual of this, which is or. And then not, not B2 
this is B2, so we get not B1 or B2. And this is De Morgan's laws. We push the knot inside, so we negate the components. And if this is an and, we make it an or. If it's an or, we make it an and. And if we go back, we see that we get what we had right here. So we could either use a truth table or we could use De Morgan's laws. Okay. Okay, so let's go to another question. What's the number of Boolean, binary Boolean functions? So a binary Boolean function is a function that takes two arguments. So I've given you the some possibilities. It could be there could be five of them, eight of them, sixteen, or infinitely many. What is the number? So turn off your video, come up with the answer, and when you're ready, we'll start again. Okay, welcome back. So, if we're going to, we can analyze this using a truth table, because remember truth tables are how we can tell what these functions are doing. So if we have an arbitrary binary Boolean function, let's call it f, and we apply f to b1 and b2. I'm writing f now in prefix format, so it takes b1 and b2. And we know these are the possibilities. We've already seen this. So there could be a lot of functions that are binary this way, but if we're going to fill out the truth table for f, we have to think of how many possibilities are can we put here? Well, there's just two because we can put true or false there, we can put true or false there, we can put true or false there, or we can put true or false there. So there's two possibilities, go here, to here, to here, to here. That means the total number of possibilities of how we put true and false here is going to be 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, which is 2 to the 4, which is 16, and that's the answer. Okay. One more thing to do today, and that is to talk about predicates. A predicate is pretty simple. It's just a function that returns bool. That's all it is. It's a function that returns bool. And notice it can we can have any types. It can take inputs of any types and can take as many of these as it wants, but it always returns bool. That is what a predicate is. So it's a special kind of function. And notice that a Boolean function is a special kind of predicate. Because a Boolean function, you know, if we go back up to our definition of a Boolean function, it's like this. It does return bool, but it always takes inputs that are Booleans. So a Boolean function is a predicate. And Haskell has built into it a whole group of binary predicates. Equality, inequality, less than, less than, equal, greater than, greater than. And if we apply a predicate fully, that means we apply it to as many arguments as it takes, we're going to get a Boolean expression. That's because the output type is bool. And predicates are very useful for making Boolean expressions. Boolean expressions are crucial for making decisions. We need to make decisions so we can skip code in certain circumstances. Okay, so that uh, completes this lecture.